At the end of World War II, plans were made in the Netherlands to annex German territory as compensation for the damages caused by the war. In October 1945, the Dutch state asked Germany for 25 billion guilders in reparations. In February 1945 it had already been established at the Yalta Conference that reparations would not be given in monetary form. The plan which was worked out in most detail was the one made by Fritz Bakker Schutt, and hence became known as the Bakker Schutt Plan. In its most ambitious form, this plan included the cities of Cologne, Aachen, Munster and Osnabrück, and would have enlarged the country's European area by 30 to 50 percent. The local population had to be either deported, or, when still speaking the original Low German dialects, Dutchified. The plan was largely dropped after U.S. dismissal of it. Eventually, an area of a total size of 69 square kilometers, 27 square miles, was allocated to the Netherlands. Almost all of this was returned to West Germany in 1963 after Germany paid the Netherlands 280 million German marks. Many Germans living in the Netherlands were declared enemy subjects. After World War II ended and put into an internment camp in an operation called Black Tulip. A total of 3,691 Germans were ultimately deported. <inaudible> <inaudible> Liberation In the first year following the liberation of the Netherlands in May 1945, dozens of pamphlets and brochures were published that propagated annexation of territory of the former German Reich, preferably without the accompanying German population. Several highly placed persons, including then Foreign Minister Ilko Nicolaas van Kleffens, put forth their own ideas regarding annexation in these publications. Opinions varied widely as to how much territory should be annexed. Some people only wanted a few border corrections, others drew the new border past Hamburg. The proponents of annexation joined in several local committees. On June 19, 1945, the Hague Committee to examine the question of Dutch territorial expansion was founded. During a meeting of this committee on July 12, 1945, it was decided to split the committee in the study group Territorial Expansion study group chaired by P.H. J. Eidenberg, and the Action Committee Comité van Acti, which had as its primary function the education of the Dutch population about the expansion plans. Six days later, the latter committee was renamed the Dutch Committee for Territorial Expansion. It was chaired by former Finance Minister Johannes van den Broek. On August 25, 1945, Minister Van Kleffens founded the State Commission for the Study of the Annexation Question, which was charged with writing a final report regarding the annexation question by May 1946. The study group Territorial Expansion set up many groups that reported about their findings. The final judgment of the State Commission would be largely based on the results of this study group. The Dutch Committee for Territorial Expansion published on the progress of the study group by giving out brochures and giving lectures. The annexation question however led to intense discussions, which lead certain groups to go their own way and among other things found the annexation committee of the Foundation for Agriculture. <laughs> Backer-Schutt plan 
Baka Shut was the President of the National Service for the National Plan, Secretary of the Dutch Committee for Territorial Expansion, and a member of the State Commission for the Study of the Annexation Question and of the Study Group Territorial Expansion. In his expansion plan, he suggested to annex a large part of northwestern Germany. All the land west of the line Wilhelmshaven Osnabrück Ham Wesel would be added to the Netherlands, as well as the land east of Limburg, where the border followed the Rhine until close to Cologne, then diverging towards Aachen in the west. In the A variation of the plan, among others the large cities of Aachen, Cologne, Münster, Oldenburg and Osnabrück were annexed. Bakker Schutt called this the Weser border and ended his writings with the slogan Nederlands Grenz Kom Aan de Weser the border of the Netherlands be at the Weser. In a smaller plan B, the West Rhineland cities Cologne, Monchengladbach and Neuss were not annexed. In a third option, Plan C, the proposed annexation was much smaller. It included an area west of Varel, the entire Emsland, and the area around Vasel until near the Duchy of Cleves. <laughs> <laughs> Areas to be annexed The areas which were to be annexed according to the Bakker Schutt plan were the following then existing districts and cities. Motivation Bakker Schutt was aware that it was difficult to claim this area on historical grounds, due to the long-time German rule of the territory, and the historically German-speaking population. Hence, he justified the annexation using arguments like increased power and greater security for the Dutch state. He furthermore considered the annexation as compensation for war damages and as a part of the population policy to be followed. Contrary to what might be expected, after an inventory he considered the natural resources of the territory to be annexed as insufficiently important to motivate annexation. In his view, even a transfer of the entire Ruhr area would not be sufficient to pay for the damages. Topic. Forced migration A big point of discussion in Bakker Schutt's expansion plan was the proposed forced migration of the original German population. Millions of Germans would have to be expelled to the remaining German territories, ostensibly because it was feared that increasing the Dutch population from 9 to 11 million people could cause trouble in providing everybody with food. A pamphlet titled Ostland, Ons Land, East Land, Our Land contained a complete schedule for the expulsion of the population, starting with all inhabitants of municipalities with a population of at least 2,500, all former members of the NSDAP and related organizations, and all inhabitants who had settled in the area after 1933. In special cases, the inhabitants could request to be naturalized, for instance if they had made efforts for the Dutch state during the war, if they usually spoke Low Saxon instead of High German, if they had no family members up to the second degree that lived in Germany, or if they wished to become Dutch. Dispute. In the Dutch cabinet, a dispute about the annexation question arose. Van Cleffens promoted territorial expansion, while Minister of Social Affairs Willem Dries later Prime Minister was dead set against it. Generally, socialists were against annexation and Protestants and liberals were reluctant. 
The Catholics saw advantages in the territorial expansion, mainly as a method to give the farmers near the border more room, and because the German territories to be annexed were predominantly Catholic, so that remaining inhabitants would have increased the percentage of Catholics in the Netherlands. Dutch churches objected to the proposed mass expulsion, because in their eyes the German population could not be found guilty of the crimes of the Nazis during World War II. Prime Minister Wim Schermerhorn was also not in favour of annexing German territory, but Queen Wilhelmina, an energetic supporter of the annexation plan, strongly urged him to start negotiating on this with the Allies. In 1946, in the name of the Dutch government, he officially claimed 4980 square kilometers, 1920 square miles of German territory, which was not even half of the area envisioned by Van Cleffens. The Dutch-German border would be drawn from VAALs via Winterswijk to the Ems River, so that 550,000 Germans would live inside the Dutch national borders. <laughs> Implementation In 1947, the planned large-scale annexation was rejected by the Allied High Commission, on the grounds that Germany already contained 14 million refugees from the annexations in the East and that the remaining territory could not handle more refugees. Furthermore, the Allies in particular the Americans considered it vital to have a stable West Germany in view of the coming Cold War. At a conference of foreign ministers of the Western Allied Occupation Forces in London, the 14th of January until the 25th of February 1947, the Dutch government, Cabinet Beel I, claimed an area of 1,840 square kilometers (710 square miles). This claim included, apart from the island of Borkum, large parts of the Emsland, Bentheim, the cities of Aarhus, Rees, Cleve, Erkelenz, Geilenkirchen, and Heinsberg, and the areas around these cities. In 1946, about 160,000 people lived in this area, of whom more than 90% spoke German. This plan was a very simplified version of the C variation of the Bakker Schutt plan. The KVP considered this proposal much too small, while the CPN rejected any kind of reparations in the form of territorial expansion. The London Conference of 23 April 1949 only permitted some less far reaching border modifications. At 12 noon that day, Dutch troops moved to occupy an area of 69 square kilometers, 17,000 acres, the largest parts of which were Elton near Emmerich am Rhein and Selfkant. Many other small border corrections were executed, mostly in the vicinity of Arnhem and Dinkspurlo. At that time, these areas were inhabited by a total of almost 10,000 people. Topic. Overview of areas annexed in 1949 from north to south Uninhabited areas 0.3 square kilometers 0.12 square miles between Neuschens and Ter Apel Uninhabited areas on both sides of the channel Almelo Nordhorn, 0.3 square kilometers, 0.12 square miles. Area near Lossa, 18 inhabitants, 1 square kilometer, 0.39 square miles. Small border road near Recken south of Harksbergen. Uninhabited area near Cotton, 0.09 square kilometers, 0.035 square miles. 
Suderic, small village bordering on Dinkspurlo, 342 inhabitants, 0.64 square kilometers, 0.25 square miles. Elton, small town on the Rhine, 3235 inhabitants, 19.54 square kilometers, 7.54 square miles. Small border road near Millingen Aan de Rijn Duivelsberg, Weilerberg between Beek and Weilerberg Border road near Mook Uninhabited area near Ottersum 0.05 square kilometers 0.019 square miles Border road near Siebingerwald, 4 inhabitants Two areas north and south of Arsen, 60 inhabitants, 0.4 and 0.41 square kilometers, 0.15 and 0.16 square miles. Area near Sittard of 41.34 square kilometers, 15.96 square miles, inhabited by 5,665 people, Selfkant, governed under the name of its main village Tudran. Border road near Ubach over Worms. Area near Rimberg and Kirkrada, 130 inhabitants, 0.88 square kilometers, 0.34 square miles. Fixed some border technical mistakes in Kirkrada. Area near Agegelshoven, 110 inhabitants, 0.11 square kilometers, 0.042 square mi. Topic. Return Starting in March 1957, West Germany negotiated the return of these areas with the Netherlands. These negotiations led to an agreement German, Vertrag vom 8. April 1960 Zwischen der Bundesrepublik Deutschland und dem Königreich der Niederlande zur Regelung von Grenzfragen und anderen zwischen beiden Landen bestehenden Problemen, short, Ausgleichsvertrag, i.e. Treaty of Settlement made in The Hague on 8 April 1960, in which West Germany agreed to pay 280 million German marks for the return of Elton, Selfkant, and to Derek, as Wiedergutmachung. The territory was returned to Germany on 1 August 1963, except one small hill about 3 square kilometers 1.2 square miles near Willer village, called Duivelsberg, Weilerberg which was annexed by the Netherlands. See also Luxembourg annexation plans after the Second World War Belgian annexation plans after the Second World War German reparations for World War II Morgenthau Plan Monat Plan Marshall Plan Oder Nice Line External links Interview with Perry Laukif, Secretary of Mission with U.S. Political Advisor for Germany, Berlin, 1945–49 describes how amongst other nations the Netherlands tried to grab German territory in 1949 Esch Dwechen Grond, Comprehensive Overview, in Dutch International Boundary Study No. 31 April 6, 1964 Germany, Netherlands Boundary. The Geographer Office of the Geographer Bureau of Intelligence and Research map. Onze Schulden Zijn Hun Schuld Photographs with Transcription and English Translation of a Pro-Annexation Booklet published in 1945.
Topic Notes. <laughs> <laughs>